My production company gets to work with major clients all over the world. And here's the top 10 steps that we would have to editing faster. Now, I wanted this video to not just touch on some tools that will be handy that are found inside Premiere Pro, but I actually wanted to go through a bit more of the structure and strategy because whether you're a beginner or a junior or a senior level editor, I wanna make sure that this video is gonna be impactful and saves you more time on your projects because time is money. So earlier on, I went around the team and I asked them what are the top five tools that you use inside Premiere Pro that have really made a big difference to your overall speed and workflow. And here's what they were. The first was scene edit detection. These guys use it because sometimes clients send us over footage or sometimes we'll end up using an export from a really old video and we'll use this to slice up the clip for us. We simply bring it in, get to use that tool to cut it all up and it saves the time going through it manually. Albeit we don't need to use this tool that much. They've referenced that when clients do send over long footage, it saves them a lot of time in the long run. The second is the speech enhancement tool and I actually think this is probably one of the most impactful things. When Adobe brought this enhancement tool into its workflow inside the audio tab of editing, it leveraged their AI technology to get crisp sound in audio and actually this is something that we used to manually do and it used to take us probably about an hour or so per video to get just right and this gets you 90% of the way there with literally a touch of a button. Third on the list is color match. Now I've had a hit or miss experience with color match and this is where you bring up an image for comparison and then right next to it you select the image that you're currently editing you'll still go through and do all of your light adjustments and then when you click color match it will match it as close as it can to the comparison image that you've given it now I sometimes think this doesn't work very well it does get you in a ballpark one of the guys here has had it work really well on a project before so it can be hit or miss for the particular project he was working on he said it was an absolute game changer because it was like all these clips were so different in color and he just wanted to balance them all out I've had some issues with it before but nonetheless I'll let you do your own testing. Next up is text-based editing. This is something that we unanimously agreed upon was one of the best tools. What this does is it will take your videos, so let's say you've got a long interview, it will transcribe it and then you can search for words. So you can search for filler words and it will take you to that point in the video where you can then remove them. Or more importantly, it can take you to the points in the video that are actually important. Because if you're anything like me, I've shot loads of interviews in my time and they're always really lengthy and we need to create a one minute video out of 10 minutes worth of footage. What we do is we run it through text-based editing. It will take us to that point and we'll just take out the bits that we need. Finally, my favorite thing here, and this might seem quite simple, but in and out points, literally just using I for in and O for out and then comma to bring it into the timeline. When I'm editing most videos, I literally don't really need to use my mouse. I literally go in out, add to timeline with the comma button, then next clip, in out, add to timeline, etc., etc., and so on and so forth. And that saves so much time. Now, like I said at the start of this video, I don't want this just to be about all the tools that Premiere Pro does. Now, if you guys want me to dive into those tools in more detail, I'm more than happy to do that. Just let me know in the comments below. But I didn't want this video to be the generic, like, use this tool and you'll edit quicker. I wanted to talk about how, as a production company, we make sure everyone's efficient and work into the same sort of time scales. So, the next tip and the first thing that we embody in with any of our editors is having a clear file structure and the file structure that we use is templated. So we pre-make that, whether that's a template for Premiere Pro that we copy and paste or template for the folders when we actually catalog footage and making sure that that's super simple. Now, I've worked with many people through my academy, video editors included, and they lay things out sometimes with way too much detail and it's simply not needed. I'll come back to that later, but our file structure consists of assets where all the video assets go in, projects, which is where all the project files go, and then exports, which is is of course where all the exports go. Now inside the project folder, I'm going to have the project file template. So when I open up Premiere Pro, it's all laid out in the same way. And inside assets, that's where I'm going to have quite simply camera A, camera B, client assets, music, so on and so forth. And I'm just gonna categorize it very simply. I'm not gonna go into loads of detail like camera A, external shots, camera A, X, Y, Z, so on and so forth. I'm just gonna leave them like that because when we run through that in the edit anyway, we're gonna use the icon view to be able to see what's on screen. So you can see that there's an interview there. It doesn't need to take someone's time to categorize that separately and you'll be able to see where the inside shots are and the outside shots. We found that this way, keeping that structure and keeping that templated made life so much easier when it actually came around to video editing and save loads of time. The next point comes down to video structure. If you don't know what type of video you're going to create, then it's gonna take you ages to do it because you're gonna be bringing in clips. Does that work here? Does that work there? I'm not quite sure. Whereas if you have a structure for the type of video that you're doing, so let's say it's a brand video for a local shop, you know you're gonna have like establisher, walking in, interactions, some happy smiling faces, and then probably a purchase or an exit. Once you 
understand that structure. And we have this template for a few different industries that we work with and a few different types of videos that we produce. Then all of a sudden, I'm not just trying to see what clips go really well where. I'm searching for the clips that I need. I'm looking for an establishing shot. Have I got a good establishing shot? Yep, yeah, great. Next one. And having that structure is really, really helpful. It's when people lose their vision because they don't know what type of video or what's really going to work is that's where you lose so much time. So having a structure, template and some of this stuff will really help. Next is proxies. Proxies is something that I never really understood. So I didn't used to use way back when. Now, I actually don't do too much editing. A lot of it's left with our editing team because they're the experts at doing what they do. Proxies is something that has made a huge difference to the amount of issues we faced with Premiere Pro and certainly with the speed it takes to edit. Because what we do is now when we come back from a shoot, we back up the content, we then get the proxies generating overnight. So then when we come in in the morning, we're all ready to work on that project. Working from the proxies makes it so much quicker in terms of your machine's capabilities and just general playback. There's way less problems and then obviously when you export you just export in the normal high res footage and everything's looking good so i would highly recommend if you don't understand proxies then to learn them if you want me to be the person to teach you just let me know in the comments below but otherwise proxies utilize them they make a big saving when it comes to the playback and times and you might only think oh it only glitches a couple of times or it only doesn't play back very well sometimes but though those times add up and this is the thing like when you zoom out by the end of the year even if you just do a few of these things you're going to save so much time and like that's a big cost to a business especially when you're employing people and you're looking at efficiencies it's a cost every time that there's an issue you want to get rid of that issue as much as humanly possible if you guys can do me a favor if you're enjoying this video just make sure to subscribe i would really appreciate that next up on the list is keyboard shortcuts this is not using the default premiere pro options go in and create your own shortcuts for the tools that you use the most so i've already explained about in out and comma now if you actually look on the keyboard i and o are at the top right and then commas on my keyboard is down at the bottom right so that's not just always a one hand thing it's a little bit kind of like mixed up so create your own templates of your keyboard layouts that are going to be the easiest for you so the guys have all got different ones but they'll basically do it where their hand sits and they'll just be able to literally just go bang 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 as they're editing the video and one of them even said like yeah ross to be honest with you keyboard shortcuts are like simple but actually one of the most effective things for him and the rest of our team actually echoed this and that's because all the tools that they use the most whether it's cutting turning layers on and off or coloring them they're just all at their fingertips and he said he doesn't even use his mouth when he's editing it's basically just all done in like a hand movement so find out what tools in premiere pro you're using the most and create a keyboard shortcut for that so that you can literally just tap your fingers and it's all done with a second and we are talking about quite literally saving just matter of seconds but that spread over a video spread over a day spread over a week month year they all add up your time is money it's valuable so number six pre-selected content. So this is when you have a conversation with a client and get them to pre-select some text templates, maybe give them five or six music choices to pick from so that they can pick their favorite two or three. And this kind of stuff, having this ready is going to save you so much time because I'm sure you've been like me, right? You spend hours trying to find the right track for that bit of video. And actually it's better if you find a track that you like or that fits the client. And again, this is the thing with video editing. It's not actually just about what you want. It's about what the client wants. And ultimately a bit annoyingly because you know you want to express your creativity and do all these fun, cool stuff, but it's really what the client needs and what's the right tone and fit for them. So download just like five songs that you think that would work well with that type of video, send it over to them, get them to sign off their favorite two or three and they're the ones that you use because it's going to save you a lot of time rather than trawling through loads of options later on. And same with text templates. If you're doing lower thirds or if you're doing motion graphics, just get all of that stuff signed off before you start the project because then you know exactly what you're looking at and you've got them all there. One of our editors turned around to me and he literally just said, Ross, it's just about knowing your shit. Because if you do that, it makes things so much easier. Like if you didn't know that spit scene edit detection existed or text-based editing existed, then you only know what you know, right? So just invest in the time to explore, check out the latest updates and see what they're bringing to the table. Well, actually, you'll find loads of ways to speed up your own workflow and how you work best. The next thing they said, which is my next point, is don't punch above your means. And what I mean by that is don't try and edit high res, you know, 8K footage off a rubbish laptop. It's just never going to work. You're going to have a bad day. And that also links into knowing your own ability what you're capable of and managing those client expectations at the very start sharing examples of your work or sharing examples of other people's work for inspiration to the client and say we can create something like this but just don't 
bite off more than you can chew because otherwise you end up in a world of hurt where the client's annoyed because you've under delivered they're not happy they keep coming back to you this project that you've only charged a day of editing for is now going on and on and on that time is money you get 100 amendments and that's a big problem and you end up burning that bridge with that client i would also say here don't let perfection be the enemy of good so many editors spend way too long tweaking the really small details and spend far too long on the edit they've only charged for a day of editing now they're spending two three days on it because they're trying to get everything just absolutely perfect number one either charge more if it's going to take you that long and you're going to give that much detail but if the client's not paying for it then you need to be really careful with what projects you overdo and the projects that actually do you know what this is going to be fine. They're going to be happy with this. It's going to exceed their expectations. And I can let this go and move on to my next one. And I'll learn from that. So now we're in the, so the top two. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I was kind of a little bit unsure because I would expect that you're probably thinking, oh, video editing probably should be more hands-on. And maybe maybe that's for another time. Maybe I'll do some more hands-on stuff showing you through DaVinci, Premiere Pro, etc. But I really wanted to provide value to the points that as a production company, we save time and that makes a huge difference to our revenue and our profit at the end of the year. And that all comes basically from the peripherals around the actual editing. And that leads nicely into introducing a QC sheet, so a quality check. All this is, is a checklist, a nice big checklist on looking over everything. Because if I was to ask you right now, what is everything that's in your mind when you think about checking one of your video edits would you be able to list everything off or would you forget something you'd probably forget something right that's probably a lot of lot of things going on in your head that when you watch a video you're having to analyze all of these things so it's only fair that you will miss stuff trust me we've caused big problems with some clients many many years ago because we just didn't check our stuff you know something simple like checking spelling mistakes is everything in this video spelt right because if there's one thing that a client won't accept is bad spelling because there's no excuse for it you could check that off you should have checked it you should have googled it you should have you know spell checked it so on and so forth that's just laziness not checking that so that's something that's guaranteed to annoy the client which isn't going to be good for your relationship so that would be one point on the quality check the next thing would be to check all the transitions do they work second check the color grading is there any graining in the background is there any artifact in how are the skin tones so on and so forth going through this checklist it's just really good at the end of the project to be like yep 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 this is all good happy to send to the client and particularly making sure that you do that after you've exported the video because otherwise there might be a glitch or there might be something that's gone wrong with the video. You send it to the client because, you, oh, you know, you're just up against it. It's Friday. It's four o'clock. Got to get this out. And you send it and then it's got a problem. Now you look like an amateur. Now the client's annoyed and now you're going to have to fix it anyway. So it'd be better to say, hey, I'm sorry, we're not going to make that deadline. And that's because I need to check this thoroughly to make sure there's no further problems with it and just be confident in that approach. Now, finally, my biggest tip here, and this might kind of sound wild to some of you guys, is outsourcing. <laughs> outsource video editing and the reason i say that is because a lot of you watching this channel won't just be video editors you'll also be photographers and filmmakers particularly who also do editing and my advice to you is get an outsourced editor to help you grow your business because here's why as a business that's growing editing takes up probably twice as long as filming so you're stuck editing when you need to be also doing sales you need to be generating new projects you need to be filming new projects and editing takes up the biggest amount of time maybe that's something you're really really good at and actually you just want to outsource the videography that's an option as well but i think the best option is often focusing on business growth so sales networking marketing and then videography because you'll be winning projects so you can go build up that rapport with the client when you're on site yeah you, know, you get to know them a bit better discuss future projects and then you get to do the filming and then offload that to editors or editing teams and that's why people who are growing i always say the first person that you should really hire is an editor because they're going to free up so much of your time which means you can focus on what we would call money generating tasks the things that actually contribute to generating money and not the operations the doing doing the filming doing the editing you can be handling the sales business growth maybe a little bit of the filming and outsource the editing at least at the very start if you're looking to make money out of video editing and you want some tips to how to grow a business click on this video here it'll provide some really good actionable steps that mean that you can get some paying clients to grow your business to that next level